Good morning guys. Coming out here this morning, typically the kids kind of take care of all of the animals. So the chickens, the goats, the pigs when we have them. But every now and then I come out and just double check and make sure that everybody's doing their job because we do obviously have occasions where people are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. So I'm going to come out and check today and make sure everybody is good. So you can see over here we've got our chickens. We've got our layer chickens over in that coop. And then in this coop, we just hatched out some dual purpose Delaware chickens that are gonna lay eggs for us, but they'll also be our breeding stock for meat birds so that we don't have to purchase those from the hatchery. I'm not sure if you guys saw this year, but my goodness, I think one little meat chick is about $5 if you're not buying huge quantities of them. So, um, so yeah, so that's the way that we save ourselves money, plus have our own stock just in case they weren't available through the hatcheries. So when we hatched these guys out, I hatched a couple of mine out and then I have a friend that we had given Delawares to um, from another hatchery um, as payment for helping us breed our goats. And so that's where this big loud rooster came from. So I hatched out some of my eggs and then I hatched out the majority of her eggs so that I could have a different genetic line and I was hoping to get a rooster from my eggs and hen, hens from hers and I didn't get any roosters from mine. So I'm gonna have to keep this guy. Once these guys get old enough, uh, we'll go ahead and take care of all the roosters um, and put them in the freezer and then we'll keep then we'll keep all the hens and he will be the rooster that will ensure that um, those eggs will be fertilized for the next time that we wanna hatch them out. But we didn't wanna have like father mating with daughter or brother and sister just to keep those genetic lines nice and far away. Oh my goodness, kitty cat, wow. He just got right up there. You can also see here, I've got my medicinal herb garden. I'm getting going with planting stuff out in here. I'm kind of, kind of been a little slower this year. I feel like things have been a little bit more on track because over the past couple of years, we've gotten a lot of work done for irrigation and just a lot of infrastructure in. So this year has been a little bit lazier and I've been a little lazier. I've been inside more doing things, um, helping the kids with school and I haven't been out in the garden as much as I usually am by this point, but I am starting to get some things in here um, we've got some culinary herbs and then also some medicinal herbs. And when I talk about infrastructure, one of the things that I mean is like you can see this white pipe here. So this pipe here, I can just turn on that red spigot um, and it gives me water right up here as opposed to having to attach it to the house and run a hose over here. Also this bucket, you're going to see another pipe that's kind of piped up here and it goes directly to that bucket. That has a little black spigot on it. All the kids have to do when they need to get water for the chickens in this coop or the other coop is just simply open the top of that bucket, turn that spigot, and that pipe fills it up. So Nate has piped water to all the animals and we also have that going all the way down to the goats and then all the way down to the pigs. And it really just eliminates a lot of that time consuming lugging of buckets and things like that. Um, so all of these types of things really, really help get things done quicker. I'm not sure how many eggs there are because I haven't collected them. Oh. Because I was, I had a sleepover. You had sleepovers. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you bad chicken. Because I want to lay my egg, kid. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's mean, don't do that. She wants to come in here and lay, that's fine. Oh, okay, all right, maybe we need to go get a... Yeah, Dominic collected 13. them yesterday. We'll go walk down and see see how the goats are doing. So the goats are going to be kidding in, gosh, uh, probably about 11 to 18 days. Um, I've got two does that are pregnant. Yeah? Oh, okay, four slash 30. When we collect the eggs, we write in pencil on one of the eggs in the cartons the date. That's how we keep track of them. So she was asking me the date. Um, but anyways, so I've got two does that are expecting to kid in the next 11 to 18 days. So I'm going to come down and check on them. Peaches is going to be my first goat that's going to deliver. She's pretty uncomfortable. She's like what I call the golden goat. She is the perfect milk producer. Tons and tons of milk. Just totally lovable, um, very sweet, 
very uncomplicated pregnancies, good delivery. So you can see she is, I don't know if she's peeing right now, but there she is. She's getting a little wide, you can see here. So she is due in about 11 days, huh baby? Yeah, she's a good girl. She's a good girl. And then this right here, this is cream. She's my other one that's due. She is not as good of a producer as milk as peaches. Peaches gives me tons of milk. Um, and she's also not as hardy as peaches. Hey, you can't eat my microphone. She's trying to eat my microphone. Um, anyways, with cream, we had found that she was getting these so No, don't. Mm -mm. Don't eat my microphone. You can't eat that. Okay? No, 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 no. Okay, I'm going to stand up. I know. Stop. Okay, I'm going to come in here because it's windy out there. I'm going to come in here because it's windy out there and I do not want the wind to pick up on that microphone. I know that's super annoying for you guys. Um, but anyways, we had found that peaches or cream, I'm sorry, cream was getting these sores on her chin and I did not know what it was. At first I thought it was something called ORF, which is like a virus. If you think about chicken pox and kids, it's kind of nasty. It's got, just has to run its course. Um, and so that's what I thought it was. I isolated her from the other goats because it's highly contagious and um, ended up taking her to the vet because it got really, really bad and I got some antibiotics for her and it cleared up. So then, honey, <laughs> that's my baby from last year. Stop. Then, no, 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 So then I put her back with the goats and then she ended up getting the sores again and I had no idea what it was. I had a vet tell me that it was CL, which is basically something where they get an infection in their lymph node, there's an abscess, it ruptures, and it's highly contagious as well. And that's something that a lot of people get their flocks or their herds tested for every year is CL. And then there's another one, CAE. We won't get into all of that. So anyways, I was really freaking out and thinking, man, how did that happen? You know, we've got a closed herd, which means that, you know, um, my goats don't interact with any other goats, but the ones that we breed them with, which is also a closed herd. So we finally figured out that their hay feeder here behind me that there were some screws in the top of this that had been sticking out and she was actually just injuring and re-injuring and re-injuring herself on those so we fixed that problem she has cleared up we've been putting a product called new stock on her chin um, which is mostly just sulfur and it has some castor oil or mineral oil in that. Um, and that has healed her up so, so well. If you guys have any animal, whether it be a dog, a cat, a goat, really anything that has a sore or you need hair to regrow on an area, um, I highly suggest that product. Um, it has worked wonders for us. So anyways, and kind of see here you can see there's cream's udders she's starting to bag up for me but her bag is not nearly as full as as peaches okay <coughs> i know i'm coming out i'm coming out i'm coming out i'm coming out ah. peaches gets very skittish when she's pregnant she's very very sweet they're both super easy to milk so um so that's been good so we're gonna be moving these guys um, in a couple of days up towards the house so that when they kid, they'll be super close. That way, if they give birth at night, I'm not having to run down through the pasture to help. Um, also, I have a little Wi-Fi camera that I stick in their goat house so that I don't have to come out in the middle of the night. I can just simply look on that and see if anybody's in labor or giving birth um, before I make the trip outside at three in the morning. <laughs> so that's super helpful too. Um, but we pull our babies. We don't let the moms raise them. We pull them and we feed them uh, with a bottle and it just makes for a really, really sweet, lovable goat. Um, they are registered Nubians. Um, so a lot of people do like that handleability um, when you bottle feed. So here you can see there's the goat's water right there and Nate has plumbed water all the way from up there all the way down so we have a water source right here we just turn the spigot on and we can either water the pigs which is this is where they are when we have them we don't have them now and then we can just also just fill their bucket and clean it so it makes it super super easy 
So we are going to be getting pigs this year again. I still have quite a bit of meat in my freezers, but I feel like pigs are the number one most cost-effective, cheapest way to give you an abundance of meat on your property. They're super, super easy. We're gonna end up getting these guys in about August. That's gonna put us at about um, a date of around January or February to process these guys. We'll do it ourselves um, and February will still be really cold here so we won't be dealing with any problems um, like flies. When you process your own animals you have to think about that because you're not working in an environment where you're in a refrigerated area um, and you don't want flies all over your meat and you want to keep it as cool or as chilled as possible um, until you're getting that vacuum seal in your freezer or however you're gonna store that so anyways yeah pigs are super easy we get them they cost about a hundred bucks a piglet and we feed them out with 1600 pounds of feed um, which costs us about four hundred dollars so for a six hundred dollar investment we'll end up getting about seven to eight hundred pounds of meat which is fantastic and I know how it was raised I know what it was fed um, I know how it was handled and so yeah, so if you guys are thinking of animals to produce your own meat, I think pigs are even easier than chickens, honestly. I mean, five months, they're here, and then they're done. Super, super easy. And it may seem daunting to think, oh man, how would I even process that animal? And it was for us at first. But the first time we did it, we thought, wow, that was a lot easier than we thought. All right, we're gonna walk down here. You can see a little bit of a junkyard down here. Sometimes when you homestead, you tend to accumulate things like, you know, Nate's in the landscape industry. So, you know, whenever they have truckloads of stuff that they're just gonna, that they're just gonna dump off somewhere, you know, at a dump or whatever, he's like, hey, I'll bring that home. And so sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad. This is also where my compost is. So um, I've got this pile. I've got this one that I'm putting in my garden right now. That's some hardwood compost. And so, yeah, so we're just going to walk up here by the garden. So I've been slowly planting some things out. Um, I still have about 56 tomatoes to get out, but I'm waiting for Nate to put in some more cattle panels for me. Um, that's how we trellis them. And so without those in, I really can't, I really can't get those guys planted. But they're getting big, and so this coming weekend we'll get all that taken care of. So you can see I've planted out some of my zucchini and then I've also planted out the majority of my cucumbers. I do have some cucumbers that I'm going to plant up by the medicinal herb garden and some trellises that Nate put up there for me this year. Um, but you can see overall, just ignore my laundry there, <laughs> overall the garden is getting pretty full. I do have some beds available but I've got three beds that I'll need to fill with sweet potatoes. I've got a bunch of peppers. Um, I've got ginger, turmeric. So I kind of have to come down and see where I can put all this stuff because I'm, I'm getting pretty full pretty quickly here. These are all my strawberries that I took off of one bed, um, all of my runners. And so these guys are actually starting to get some berries on them. We've actually gotten a few handfuls of berries from the beds in the raised bed garden and man, they've been delicious. So we're hoping for a bumper crop of strawberries because we can just eat through these things so quickly. The broccoli's looking really good. It's gotten a little bit hot. You can see here like this guy, you know, this is not a super tight head. So you can see that he's pretty stressed by the sun. I'll have to pick him. And then you can see here, here's another one that has just getting ready to go to seed. We've been so warm. Um, some days have been in the 80s. I think we've actually hit 90 and we're not even into May yet. But for the majority, most of them look really, really good. Here's my row of tomato plants that I've got in last weekend. Um, they look a little bit, I don't know, a little floppy or so. I think that's just the nature of Amish paste tomatoes. That's what this entire row is. There's 78 of them in here. Um, and they're just, they're just floppy by nature. You'll grow some that have really strong stalks and are really, really robust plants. But the Amish paste, until they get established, just... I don't know they just look like they're on their deathbed I guess so that's normal I did plant some dragon tongue bush beans here and then at the very end of this row I planted some 274 um, blue lake bush beans for just green beans so my cabbages are coming along these guys are starting to head up for me 
a little head right there. And then our peas. You can see it's a little sparse in here. That's one variety. And then, can you see the difference between this variety and this variety? So you can see that this variety did a lot better for me. These guys here just have tons of flowers. They're getting ready to put on those pea pods um, so that we can get our shelling green peas from them. This variety is called Bistro, um, and this one has far surpassed what the Maxigolt variety has done, which is this variety. You can see here, very limited flowers. Um, the germination was not as good, and these things are just not filling in as quickly. Um, so that's why it's really good to trial things um, to see what works because, you know, if I didn't trial them and I just stuck with this one variety here, which is Maxigolt, um, you know, I might just think, well, this is the best I can get, so, which is not the case. Okay, guys, well, that's it for this morning. Hopefully the wind was not too bad. It's kind of starting to pick up. Um, just wanted to take you along and show you a little bit of just what we got going on this morning. My kids have finals tomorrow, uh, my two oldest ones. So even though we homeschool, they're in a co-op program that's pretty rigorous and it pretty much directs their schooling for the year. So they've got their finals tomorrow. So we'll be doing a lot of logic. Uh, I'm not looking forward to that. Um, up at the house today for my oldest. Um, probably some Latin and biology for my younger one. But yeah, so <laughs> anyway, so that's what I'll be up to today. I am hoping to get a few things planted in like my eggplant and things like that. You can see behind me here, the blackberries have put on even more flowers. These things are nuts. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me doing my little supervisor um, routine this morning, making sure everybody is keeping up with their tasks and what they're supposed to be doing. But uh, anyways, guys, I hope you all have a great rest of your day and that you are getting your gardens in, hopefully a little bit faster than I am because I've been kind of slow this year. <laughs> but anyways, thanks guys so much and we will see you in the next video.